This weather is goddamn beautiful, man. I'm gonna lie to you, bad start to my 18 hour week since I didn't uh, wake up last night. Well, I did wake up, my alarms went off. And then I lay there and I was like, oh, I'm a bit hot. Got out of the duvet, should have just got out of bed. I need to get out of bed more. <laughs> and instead I got back into the duvet and I was like, oh, let me just get a little bit warm up, bang, asleep. Fuck's sake. That is not good. Um, I'm gonna rebalance around my naps. I think I'm gonna nap at lunchtime and not in the evening and then do some work tonight. I need to churn out the work this week. This is an important week for me. Which is another reason why, even though the weather's really nice and I really wanted to, I'm walking all the way in because I want to get back home in time tonight so that I can start doing some work and get a good amount of work done before Laura gets home. Hopefully I can get my head down and get a load of work done as well at work so I can like get my head down, get in the zone, get home, carry on that zone, you know? Days, it's so warm. This is so good. Flip me. This is like the perfect weather for me, where it's like just warm enough for like a hoodie and jeans. No, 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 no. It's like a hoodie and jeans and t-shirt, perfect temperature. I want it where you've got to decide whether or not to wear a hoodie or whether or not to wear shorts. That's bullshit. If you're ever in short weather, it's too hot. Jeans all the way. <laughs> had a pretty good day today. I was chomping through the code, which is pretty good. Um, the I picked my battles a little bit. I started a battle and decided it wasn't worth it. That much code change in one go would be quite a big regression. I'm doing a big, um, a big refactor. Um, it's pretty fucking big. It's probably the biggest bit of code we've done since I've got there. So it's probably not best that I just rip apart everything else. I'm trying to do it in a quite succinct, limited way instead of just change everything, you know? Um, so I'm trying to keep shipping the same, but billing addresses are different. Because billing addresses are slightly easier to change than the other one, but it proves the concept for the other one. That's the plan. I figured out the best way of blocking out the sun so I can see my monitors, but still feeling like I can see outside and not feeling like I heard. Home, it's five o'clock. I'm gonna do some work until Laura gets home. Start shopping tonight. We are getting it delivered, so working all night. Okay, so this is where the grunt work is. The next piece of work I've got to do is I've got to let you select one of the things that you've been given and then automatically generate, oh, blah, blah, automatically generate some stuff on your behalf. And this is going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be absolutely Gucci. because I'm going to have to do a lot of stuff on the fly. I'm going to have to try and figure out what the heck is going on. Um, so there's one bit of information I've got to compute, a runtime, and then I've got to basically spit, like go query an API, which doesn't have a nice generated client that I can use or a NuGet package I can reference. Um, and then using that API, I've got to generate some stuff. That's that then got to talk to something else that I've created, which is probably going to be an Azure function. Uh, and that's then going to talk to my message bus. The message bus is then going to talk to me. It's a big old whippity doodah. Um, so, look forward to it. <laughs> it's going to be a hoot. I do think that this is definitely a back-end first kind of problem. Um, the front end is somewhat trivial. Um, apart from the fact that, well it's not actually trivial, but it's effectively just a button this precise moment in time, um, that will call an API that doesn't exist yet. Um, I'm assuming I can edit those things. Let me just check the API and make sure I can edit those things after the fact, because that's what I want to do. You replace it. You replace it. Okay. Because what, what I was going to do was I was going to allow this thing to basically accept everything, and by default, everything is as open and as simple as possible, but then I build it so that as I need to build in customization, I can build in the customization after the fact. Um, That may not be immediately possible for all of these things here, though. Um, it's interesting that I can't, if I do a get on that, what do I get? This thing spits back some data. If I can't modify it, I have to replace it with another one. So in theory, then, if I've got to replace it regardless, there's no point in me worrying about um, this too much. Okay. Do I allow you to do one thing to customize it ahead of time? No. Any pull request, it will apply to, and within a certain repository. No restrictions. Shopping's here. I'm already at two hours. Well, that could have been five hours if I'm working on. Okay, to hit 80 hours a week, I need to average 11 and a half hours a day. Today, we've done 10 and a half. 
doable, man. It's doable. We're gonna do a lot of work on the weekend. <laughs> have the a lot of the when I start new stuff, there's a lot of like strip up that needs to be done. Uh, there's like new queries and new commands that need to be set up. I need to set up the responses and the pipeline and the validators and all that kind of stuff. As soon as that's set up, I've now got the tests written for the controller, the API controller, uh, and then I just need to write the test handler, um, the command handler itself. So I've done like all of the strip work to get from the API down to the domain, and the domain is now going to be doing what it needs to be do to create these web hooks. Um, and I need to create cloud functions. I don't know whether. I assume I can just, just have one cloud function that deals with everything um, rather than piss them out with multiple um, fucking, uh, you know what I mean, like deploying a cloud function perfect, that, that sounds mental. Yeah, we're not doing that, that's insane. I've got to create webhook, well I've got to create a webhook that listens to the responses and then I've got to create the actual, like whatever they call the, me, the subscription to the webhook, or, uh, pro programmatically. And it's going to be an absolute hoop because I need to calculate a lot of stuff. Getting there though. Good fun. We've 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 spent two hours on this, and I've got a lot of the lot of the strip up sorted. Important while I'm aiming for hours this week. To bear in mind that hours are not worth the hours if they are quality hours. So, I'm right, good. I'll sit there. Have a cup of tea. Watch some. Something on TV with Laura. The legitimately productive night last night. I've got all the plumbing wired in, and I now I'm at the point where I've got my connection to the client, um, the uh, co-provider client. But I've now got to kind of connect to a different API. Generate the webhooks. The um, the API is slightly different, so I need to build in a way of doing that. Um, and I'm just kind of at the point now where I think I've got one more failing test to fix, um, and then. I've just got to create these endpoints, which means spinning up HTTP clients and all this kind of malarkey. It's going to be good fun. I'm going to put most of it on the message bus, I think, which is going to make it difficult to test. But I don't think it's one of them things that you that needs to sit and wait for the user to be around for effectively. So walking all the way in today from the park and rock because I set off really early and I was like, you know what, I'm going to walk out in this nice weather and think about that. But my hands are so dry. I'm putting my mittens back on to keep them moisturised because I'm a scaly son of a bitch. The refactor that I managed to pull off at work. God, it's gorgeous. It's just, oh, oh mum, my meat, so fucking good. I've got to do now, which kind of shits on how nice and clean my idea is, um, is uh, root out, um, return the result of the update. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, hoping to kind of do it optimistically, if that makes sense. Um, so the API gateway just kind of displays what would have happened, what it thinks would have happened, rather than what necessarily did. Um, but due to some of the data that I've got, I don't know it all, so I can't. I've got to do another round trip. And I'm like, God, I just removed this round trip. <laughs> and I've got to put another one in. I mean, there are still like only three hops instead of the old six or seven plus. Um, but hey ho. It's nice and now, isn't it? Otherwise, loving this weather. Walking back, left a little bit later than I was supposed to, so I'm running a tad late. I need to get back, sleep, wake up, <laughs> and then I need to do dinner. We're going out tonight to the cinema. I say we, it's not me and Laura, me and Ben. <coughs> this horror club, boys, is going to complicate the uh, napping situation. I'm gonna have to wake up nice and um, at an ad hoc time period. I'm not going to get back until the time I'm supposed to be asleep and don't, don't know if you've seen the trailer for us but it's a horror and it looks fucking terrifying so it might mess up my sleeping cycle ever so slightly but what I'll do is I'll set the timer my a timer instead of an alarm so instead of setting my alarm for half past midnight I set an hour and a half timer and then work from there Wise home and eaten uh, not eaten Slept. <laughs> I'm waiting for Laura to come home now. She is on the bus, but there are some traffic issues going on in town. Um, so I am gonna just cram in that little bit extra work, boys. At work every hour God fucking sends you, my boy. Very much all work, no play over here, boys. <laughs> Except going to cinema. So there's definitely a little bit of play going in there, boy. Yeah, look, hey, we're gonna cross. We're gonna do it, boys. We're gonna beat four hours today, over average, on. Oh, I'm doing where we're going out. We're also going out tomorrow as well. 
but straight after work, not in the evening. So I should be able to go to bed on time at least. I'll miss my evening nap. Fuck it out. Don't have to make my own life hard, do I? Jeez. I'm back, and I'm back in time for a semi-decent bedtime as well, which is good. Um, I hate films like that because it was so fucking good and I can never get Laura to watch it. It was really good. So we watched, it was Us, um, watched the trailer. It's, it's so good and you just leave it and you're like, what the fuck happened there? And it's just one of them ones where it's just like, twist, like, oh man, it was good. Oh man, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, well, there seem to be quite a few good films I've recommended so far, but that, I think that is the best horror -y film I've seen. Um, yeah, it's just really interesting, like really like, fast, like fascinating. It's one of them films where you watch it and then you want to watch it again and it will be completely different the second time because you know the end. And you'll be like, oh, 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 yeah. Damn. But when the cinema is as cheap as it is these days, six pounds, two for one, because of um, compare the market, six pounds, two people, IMAX, of course. Also, I'm gonna, it's gonna be one of the films where I look up the soundtrack because there was one bit towards the end where it just sounded absolutely fucking incredible. Um, and I think I've said before, like my, my, if I could choose to do anything in the world, it would be composed music for films. I fucking love film music. Um, and that was like masterfully done. And one of them things where you doing yourself a disservice listening to that in anything other than Dolby Surround Sound or Dolby Atmos. I think it was Atmos. I did wake up last night. I was tired, but I woke up. I wasn't as productive as I have been, but I was still a bit productive, which is good as well. Managed to test, you know how I had the paging thing? I now officially have like adding something to my database. So it's now going to both pay, uh, both sources. And it's one of those things where I developed it, but I didn't really have a way of testing it because um, I had no way of putting it in the database. Um, or pulling it out of the database or anything like that um, and ran it and it just worked and I love that there's no better feeling than writing something than a week later having to integrate with it it just works first time beautiful um, but yeah so I'm now looking at the message bus I've started putting messages on the bus I'm just kind of architecting out the process of connecting up this webhook it's going to involve some funky cust well not custom but like uh, HTTP clients I'm not using a nougat packages to connect to this one so ever the glutton for punishment i'm back in bristol meeting up with a friend again already pretty hard waking up to my alarm yesterday um so what does he do he he tries it again today boys he's missed his afternoon his evening nap i lengthened my lunchtime nap as long as possible like into the afternoon instead of 12 i did half past one but i'm already starting to feel tired so last night was probably like the night before the wall on a normal day so the wall's gonna hit me like a fucking freight train tonight, boys. But I'm walking across town. I'm gonna meet up with my mate Paul from my job two jobs ago. Why is this keyboard player? Is he's not very good. <laughs> we didn't have a crazy amount of time to chat last time because uh, I had to go, but I do this time because uh, Laura's making her own way home. I don't need to give her a lift. We've planned to go for food, so I'm gonna have to up my conversation game this time. And time to head back to the car. What a fun! We had a fun little chat. We have quite a lot of, I'm just seeing a, it's on the screen, not on the lens. <laughs> There's like a big old mark, but it's on the screen. Um, so yeah, we went for Polish food, which the starter was really nice, but the main wasn't particularly. Surprised how many shops are open at this time, to be honest with you. And also these, they go slow until you step on it. <laughs> but it's really like disconcerting. I think we had pierogies to start, which were really nice, but then the thing was just like slow cooked beef. And the beef was nice, but it, quite a lot of it was quite fatty. We started the Brexit chat just as we were about to get the bill. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like this, um, uh, like Polish food place, and it was you have to order two days early so that they can slow cook it all, quite long enough. Um, yeah, like I say, the starter was freaking lovely, and you can have that on like a bigger plate as well, like lots of them. And that would have been better than the slow cooked beef. To be hurt. But anyway, let's go home. Starting to regret not going to the toilet before this, but. Let's go home and I'm trying to figure out how to inject two, effectively two HTTP clients. Could stop using the nougat package 
to talk to the code providers. Stop using the NuGet package and just roll with my own run-up HTTP clients. But there are obvious downsides to that. But it means I only have to inject one client. Because at the moment, I'm kind of in, I'm injecting a client for the NuGet package. I'm injecting a client for effectively each different type. So I'm thinking about having one for Git and one for service hooks. I'm pretty confident that there's probably only two that I'm going to need service hooks in this. They're the only two things I'm effectively managing at this level. So, and then somewhere else in a different microservice, I'll inject different types of clients where they might need more than one. Or I could do like a base style one where they all use the same API underneath. Really, they're just different URLs on the same API. So maybe it simplifies it to roll with a handwritten one. If it's possible to blend the two, probably not. Because I'm looking at using something like Refit to automatically generate the clients. Um, automatically generate. Um, I, you just create the interface and it does everything else for you. Um, I did have struggles with log it. I've used Refit in the past and it does hide exceptions quite annoyingly. It just throws a generic exception and doesn't really give you enough information to solve the problem. But mm, we've got downstairs and play some Super Mario Kart with Laura. So day number two, above average number of hours, despite being out for most of the day. Fuck. I'm not gonna wake up on time, am I? That's uh, <laughs> I could sense that one coming already. And if I do, it's probably gonna be so unproductive that it's better for me just to play Xbox or something. What I'm cautious of is I'm cautious of creating too many different HTTP clients. I think that's the thing that's making me want to kind of consolidate them into one and concede to the fact that not everything I'm going to be able to do has a NuGet package. So maybe the sooner I get used to that, the better. But if it changes over time, NuGet packages just update and I don't have to sit and maintain it and keep an eye on docs. And it's not like I can auto-gen from a swagger file either. Vaguely remember my alarm going off last night. Um, I remember not being able to turn it off properly. Um, and then I woke up this morning, knackered. <laughs> so yeah, I got hit with a freight train of sleep. Um, it's a minor setback, but hey, otherwise I'm walking in today as so I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do today. I've kind of finished all my work. <laughs> like, really early as well. A lot earlier than I think we were expecting to. Um, and so, I'm now trying to find out what I can do. I'm thinking of trying to keep my head down a little bit and then doing some proof of concept work um, of introducing, what I might do is create some node um, node services that talk via a message bus and just kind of prove that, that out. Um, I feel like that's gonna be my plan for today. Um, I can either do that or I could do some um, web API .NET Core web APIs. I think that's a bit too basic, um, to be honest. So I think it's more important for me to sort out the message buses. So I think I've decided it. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some node services, uh, some pub subs, some um, subscribers, some publishers, and a saga. There's a mass transit saga on a .NET microservice, um, and then roll from there. That's my plan of attack. Oh yeah. Since I slept through last night, I thought I'd come out for a walk. Also, I'm celebrating a little bit because I just put together my proof of concept. Plans, events, sagas uh, in C-sharp, and then um, a node processor. So I basically got a C-sharp orchestrator and a shitload of uh, node services that go off and do all their shit that they need to do, and then made sure that the saga is able to kind of resume back from where it was. Um, because I was conscious that maybe I'd lose Saga state when I dropped from C Sharp into JavaScript, but nope, not the point, not the case. My end game, we're starting a new project on Monday. Um, and my end game, my like where I wanna be at, is at a point where I can ban all use of this certain project. So we have a project that's filled with NuGet packages and it's filled with some really bad ones. <laughs> Um, and I'm just going to ban it. I'm just going to be like, no, it's not used. No one includes it. 
nothing. We don't want it. One of the things that was going to get in the way of me doing that was uh, our use of message buses. Um, and I'd mentioned we need to use mass transit. And then someone kind of in that meeting just Googled it and they couldn't find anything that was C-sharp that wasn't C-sharp based. And they're like, oh, we might want to have node microservices. I was like, well, first up, you can use it with node microservices if you want to. Um, it's still, like, it's like HTTP, effectively. Literally all it is, is defines a shape of message. Um, and then something that sits on the consumer and like orchestrates a load of logic. Um, but then because someone did that, they were like, oh, we can't use that then. So I had to prove that. <laughs> I needed to make sure I had some proof to make sure that I didn't just get vetoed as soon as I tried it. Now all I need to do is do some configuration stuff. Um, so set some DI config effectively um, to make sure that we have enough, um, to make sure that we can start the applications properly. Um, which should be even trivialer, even more trivial than that was. So, oh, the only hard thing about that was I'm not a JavaScript developer. I can, I can just about, hold my own but I'm very much a Googler when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to JavaScript. There's a couple of things I want to do to simplify it um, to simplify the process but otherwise we're, we're laughing now boys. Ah, God I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed with myself. I need to figure out what the next thing is that they're gonna not want to lose from that other Nougat package and then me prove that there's a better one in the market that someone else has already written and we don't have to maintain. Quids in. Thinking about it and I think I am gonna just create um, HTTP clients, one HTTP client that does everything for my code at home and not um, multiple. So recap, I've been using a NuGet package to interact with the Git aspect of VSTS, uh, but there isn't a NuGet package to talk to the service hook area. So I'm gonna create my, I have to create a client to talk to that. And do I sit and maintain two connections? Um, even though you may not necessarily want to use one or the other, do I allow you to create multiple providers of different types for this thing and overcomplicate it like that? Or do I just have one that only has access to the things it needs rather than the things it doesn't need? And like, I've been thinking about it, and while there's a somewhat risk that the API shifts or the versions shift and then it stops working, and like normally I'd just update a new package and I'm happy days, but then I have to read the documentation and understand how it works and all that kind of stuff. A, I'm gonna have to do that at least a little bit anyway, and B, everyone does this. <laughs> like having a new package is like a privileged position to be in. Um, you just, just interfacing directly with a web API isn't the end of the world. It's not hard. It's not overcomplicated. It's what everyone does. Just do that. So I'm gonna do that. It means I'm gonna have to strip, I'm gonna have to change like the low level part of how that aspect works. Um, but easy, you know, trivial mate, trivial. Okay, I'm gonna use refit and I'm gonna use uh, HTTP client factory to make sure that it's, I've got a good instance of it each time. It means it's a lot more better tested. Um, I say that because half the abstractions that I was doing with the NuGet package, which weren't unit testable, were hidden in like a wrapper class. Um, now I effectively just have the wrapper class. Um, if that makes any sense, it's just to me. Started fleshing out the change from using the NuGet package to using refit. It's much cleaner. I think this is the way forward. Um, I haven't, well, I'm, I'm just kind of building it separately. I'm using this as an excuse to change it, rename it from VSTS to Azure DevOps as well. Um, I'm building it in parallel, implement it, test it, then I'll swap the other one out and then I'll, um, add the new functionality that I want. I'm just trying to get the repositories working again. It's good fun. Nearly there. And it's much, much cleaner. Even than the NuGet package, because the, because the NuGet package was predominantly filled with sealed classes that I couldn't test. So I had to fudge it so that I could unit test the bits I cared about. Not the best day for my eight, uh, eight hour week today, boys. I am behind, behind schedule to say the least. But yeah, I'm getting some good work done. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with my decision. It's gonna make it a lot easier to maintain the um, one, it sets a pattern for everything else I'm gonna integrate with. Um, and it makes it easier so I don't have to maintain different things. I don't have to worry about how this NuGet package is doing its version of HTTP clients and all that kind of stuff. I just have one centralized way of doing it. It's a bit of a faff making sure that my models match the serialization properly and getting all of that kind of stuff. But it's only serialization problems that I really was getting for free. Um, it's not trivial, like it's pretty trivial getting the right URLs and getting the authentication hooked up with clients and whatnot. So, yeah, not bad. Right, I'm gonna head off to bed.
Um, I've got a checklist of things I could do. I should be able to have got this new client integrated in and then potentially started um, building out the uh, API calls I need to do in order to save my new stuff. Um, one of the advantages of... Oh no, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Ignore me. I just need to pull out the um, project name from the URL that the user gives me because I... I'm a dick, basically, in the way that... I get the user to give me a URL that's not the URL I use on the API, <laughs> which is banter, really. But yeah, I'll, I'll figure that shit out. <laughs> I must, I must have solved this problem somewhere before. I'm thinking about it because I, I, I swear you need it for a VSS connection object. But that's by the by. In this video here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out.